interesting big deal and uh, on the sidelines of the IVCS summit, I spoke to a whole host of investors. You heard Vishal Mahadevia being bullish on India but being also uncertain about the deal environment currently, especially because of the changing macros as well as also the volatility that is taking place in the valuation front. Hear out some homegrown investors as well on their view on investments in India. We have with us Manish Kejriwal of Kedara. So Manish, uh, happy to speak to you. Always a pleasure to welcome you on CNBC TV 18. Looking at the macro condition and the economic uh, you know, concerns that most of the people and the economists are raising, what is your view as an investor for this particular year, globally as well as for India? Firstly, great to see you, Nisha. Great to be here. This is by surprise, but always good to see you at all times. I think, uh, listen, uh, we'll do the two separately because I think the perspective is quite different. If you look at it globally, I think the biggest issue, in addition to obviously all the G2G troubles coming out of Russia, now the US-China uh, issues, uh, uh, Europe being in a bit of a slump, the US economy really is what's keeping stuff alive. And there also you've had issues around the venture and the early stage and availability of capital. But the single biggest issue globally has been inflation. Uh, if you keep the G to G aside. And here I think it's quite different. In countries like India, we're already used to a 5 to 6% real GD, uh, inflation rate. Maybe it's 200 basis points more right now. We can live with it. Yeah. Though we are seeing the impact of that, especially in our portfolio in rural India, yeah. and especially at the lower end of the pyramid. The bottom, not the bottom of the pyramid, but the lower half of the pyramid right. is where the inflation is really hurting. We've seen consumption, but I think that's temporary. Globally, inflation is a huge issue because countries used to zero, even negative yeah. rates of inflation like Japan to 3% to Europe or the US. Now have an inflation rate almost 2x or sometimes 3x that amount. That leads to higher interest rates, lower availability of debt and credit, and hence deals in private equity are going to be much more challenged. So I think overall, India, a bit of an issue, but I think we'll get over it. Globally, inflation is a massive issue. And what about the investor sentiment for this year in terms of investing and also exit options have also squeezed because of the volatility in the equity market. So how will the private equity space really behave, expected to behave for this year? Now we keep it to India only, right? Because yes. globally yes. this will be too complicated. Yes. So in India, I think the bane has always been exits, right? Yes. I think the good thing we've seen the last seven or eight years mm -hmm. for the industry as a whole Compared to a decade ago, the level of exits, yes. the DPI across the board on average yes. has increased tremendously. Yes. But the issue which is really hidden behind uh, Anisha is its bimodal. Yes. Some funds have shown DPIs of 300 to 400% on a fund. Others are at zero or even single digits. Yes. So I think what's going to happen, and I'll be already seeing this at least in the late stage private equity side, is capital is going to the winners. Yes. The winners and the non-winners mm -hmm. are being separated. It's bimodal. Yes. Yes. And there'll be no dearth uh, or no shortage mm -hmm. of capital for the funds mm -hmm. which have a high performance, shown great DPI, yes. uh, are in fund two, three, or four, and most importantly, mm -hmm. who've institutionalized their funds. Right. It doesn't matter. And these, these teams are now not relevant or reliant on any one or two people. Yes. These firms will run forever. Yes. The other firms, at least in the P space, will be more challenged who haven't shown returns. Yes. The VC space is very different. Yes. I think there's still, there are clearly four or five very strong performers. Yes. But I think the jury's still out there. And will there be, like in P, there are two or four names. Yes. In VC, there are four or five clear winners, yes. but there could be 10 or 15. Now, uh, how do you see the timeline for which this particular phase is going to be a difficult phase for the tech digital world? I actually think the, cor the corollary is true. The, uh, if I look at what's attractive about India, the tech stack is phenomenal, right? I mean, that's created the, ba and what the government has done on that front yeah. is truly miraculous, right? It started off with, the, you, with a whole bunch of the different initiatives that we all know about. If I look at, the last two years, we actually almost deployed nothing in 2021 mm. because we were irrelevant. There was capital available plenty. Yes. You had many of the global guys coming in without using any names. We all know who they are, yes. who deployed capital at crazy valuations. Yes. 
suddenly in the middle of 2022, yes. or maybe the around April, May, yes. when there was a crash globally and yes. India also felt that and people started pulling money out, is when we became relevant again. Yes. So many PE firms, ourselves included, not surprisingly, mm. had a very benign 21, early 22. Yes. And we've done a series of deals in 22, only because yes. our perspective and valuation hasn't changed like the mood or the weather. Yes. We've remained consistent. Yes. The numbers we offered for the same company in 21, which we were thrown away for, mm. we were welcomed back with open arms. So I right. think that's the big change. Yeah. We haven't changed our mode at all, but the context has changed, right. where we feel a lot more relevant, especially when you come with not just capital, but a long, uh, lots of other skill sets, whether it's operating partners, you add value in a company becoming an IPO. Yeah. I think even the entrepreneurs in India who I think have been the most important reason why we have all come back and lived in India. Mm. It's exciting, it's not a job, you're enjoying every moment of this, yes. of living, right? Yes. But even they have matured over the times. Yes. They're seeing the difference like LPs are mm. between those GPs who add value, right. those GPs which is there for a free ride. But valuations are very, very important right now and they have been volatile, Manish. How do you see this particular year in terms of volatility in valuations and especially in the digital space, which is something that all the private equity players look at very keenly. Is it going through going to go through a major crash and cash and burn, uh, so to say, and then uh, there'll be a few casualties as well. How do you see the picture for this year? So Nisha, if I could truly predict the future, I wouldn't be here. We would be playing on those slot machines. Uh, but all jokes aside, uh, it's tough. I think it's going to be a challenging year. Yes. I think uh, what companies got used to in terms of a burn rate, it almost reminded you of 2001 or 2000, right? Mm. The eyeball culture had come back to a certain extent. Yes. I think now people are looking at fundamentals, unit economics, what is the real TAM? Uh, and asking what's the bottom uh, line, which should and be the first question. Exactly, anyway. exactly. And right. But if the bottom line, in my mind, can be delayed. But it needs to As be there eventually, right? Yes. And I would say we ourselves are mostly smokestack industries. We've started looking at the consumer tech space, done very few investments. Right. But there were a couple of team members who really believed in this and convinced the rest of the organization we should right. look at it. Right. So I think as far so we do tech and non-tech consumer tech we do financial services etc etc but in tech especially what we have been spoiled with with the large global players is corrected to a certain yes. extent yes. it might change again but i think the discipline has now come in where for at least guys like us yes. this is a much better environment to deploy capital behind but the resultant will be again a bit like what i was saying about gps there'll be winners and losers yes. so in every vertical you know let's say there will be market leaders who will consolidate their position, yes. have no issue raising capital, yes. whereas the others who were burning money who did not have a viable plan in the first place will go away and shut down. All right, your sectors of choice for this year. You know, I, as you know, since my days in Tamasic, love financial services. For me, and that's what I said on the panel, to me, financial services is a proxy for the country's growth, right? So to me, we're focusing on that, of course, but not just lending businesses, but also insurance, also asset management. Yeah. We also like tech and technology services. You know, yeah. we have guys like Pramod Basin working with us. Yeah. We've done a couple of deals in that space. Yeah. We've also done a couple of recent things in the healthcare, pharma, pharma, uh, healthcare services side. Yeah. And lastly, the whole consumer, consumer tech space, yeah. where historically and even currently, we've always been nervous on valuations. But I think what happens yeah. is, even in those situations, I don't, I hope we never overpay, yes. but the beauty on India is even if it's, uh, no matter what the deal is, the underlying thesis is growth. Yes. So even if you, as we talk, if you slightly overpay, I'm not saying we want to go down there, then you can make it up, maybe you hold the investment one year longer. Yes. You'll have the same MOI, maybe a lower, slightly lower IRR if you've paid too much, but the underlying growth remains, right? right. In my mind, the crazy valuation, that's, that's history. All right, uh, so those were the investment views coming in. There are macroeconomic concerns and changing valuations and many dynamics are really changing. It is likely to be a little difficult here for deal making and also the deal flow slowdown is looking evident at the moment. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of Big Deal. Thanks so much for tuning in.